There's been speculation about the position of Ed Miliband, the Labour Party opposition leader. With me is Janan Ganesh, our chief political columnist. Janan, why is Mr Miliband in trouble? Because he used to have an opinion poll lead of maybe 15 points. It then fell to about 10 points earlier this year. It was about five points over the summer. And you can see where I'm going with this. It's now a zero point lead or maybe a one or two point lead. Within a general election next May? Yep, six months from now. And if you look at the internals in, within those opinion polls, his personal ratings, which have always been bad since he became Labour leader in 2010, are now absolutely horrendous. He's actually overtaken Nick Clegg, the Deputy Prime Minister, as the single most unpopular politician in this country. And so there were rumours last week of a group of Labour MPs uh, initiating the long process of maybe unseating him and finding a replacement. Those rumours have died a little bit, but uh, I think there'll be a new round of speculation in the new year if Labour's opinion poll performance and his own is no better. And we know that Ed Miliband is not the blow-dried, uh, photogenic politician of Washington Mole, but uh, on the other, there are other questions about where he stands, for example, on business. Yeah, I, I think if, all, if his only problem was presentational, then uh, he would at least be blameless. He can't do much about the way he comes across in, in that sense. But he has compounded his presentational problem by where he has placed himself on the political spectrum. Which is where? Some way to the left of the, of the British people, I think. And Compared to Tony Blair? Yeah, the Labour won three elections under Tony Blair as a very centrist leader. And they've now got a guy who is perceived to be anti-business, uh, irresponsible when it comes to the public finances and has chosen to pick a fight with modern capitalism, which is quite an ambitious thing to do if you're an opposition leader and your first job is to reassure um, a nervous public. So he has compounded all his inherent disadvantages by ideological positioning. And how those policies manifest themselves? He's, for example, proposed a freeze in energy prices. Yeah, he, he, he thinks that if there's no money to spend, what a left-wing government does is intervene directly in markets. And so last year he got himself out of trouble when he was unpopular by proposing a freeze in energy prices for households. But there have also been flirtations with other ideas like rent control. Um, and the general aroma is of neo-corporatist sort of 1970s style Labour politics, which I think a lot of swing voters assumed had gone with uh, Tony Blair and Gordon Brown. Bringing that back seems an odd thing to do uh, six months before. On the other hand, uh, Ed Miliband, in contrast to David Cameron, is saying he won't he has no intention of holding a referendum and is generally more pro-European uh, than the government, uh, the Conservatives. Yes, they, the Labour have two big offers to business. One is they're going to uh, get rid of the immigration cap and have more of an Australian point system so highly qualified foreigners can come in more easily. That's a big business complaint. But Europe is the really big one. They, they show no enthusiasm for a, a referendum, which means if you're a large business, you do business with the internal market in Europe, you can have relative certainty that under a Labour government uh, you won't lose access to 500 million consumers. So to wrap up, is, does that mean that David Cameron is uh, home and dry? This is the hardest election to predict in my lifetime. Force me to, to, to say who will be Prime Minister, I suspect it will be David Cameron, but either a minority government or another coalition. Well, at least we, don't, we know that as opposed to that Arsenal probably won't win the championship. Thank you, Janan. Thank you.